Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 14 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to unleash the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. I will need you to pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we are using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now by lesson number 14, hopefully most of you guys already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description, there is a link over to Amazon and you can hop on over there and pick up a kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is the way that MicroPython handles variables and data arrays, variables and arrays. And it's very important to understand this because if you don't understand it well, you can introduce bugs into your software and those bugs can sometimes be very difficult to find okay sound good well let's just jump right in i will move out of your way and then we will come over to this code view and what you can see is i have the most excellent raspberry pi pico w up here fired up and running and then it is connected to my pc via usb cable and then over on the pc over on the pc i have Thani running but the Thani is actually executing the code down on the raspberry pi pico w so if you've taken my earlier classes in this series that should make perfect sense but what i'm going to be doing today you can see that i've got a program written up here but rather than write a program run it write a program run it i'm gonna just be down here operating at the command line and so each thing that i type in it will execute the Python, the line of Python code right when I put it in. And that way we can learn quicker and we can understand this quicker than writing a program, running it, writing a program, running it. We can just sort of learn this by watching it execute in real time. So how do we use variables in a micro Python? It's very simple. You could do something as simple as X equals seven. When I say X is equal to seven, I can then come in and I can say print X and then when I print X, no big surprise, it prints out what? Seven, because X is seven. Now, if you're working on the Arduino or C, different versions of C or JavaScript, you actually have to declare your variables before you use them. So you would have to do something like, you would have to do something like say integer X, you would have to say that X is gonna be an integer and the integers are the round numbers, the numbers like one, two, three, four, C Zero is also an integer. The negative numbers are integers like minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, but they're the positive and negative round numbers, including zeros. Zero. Well, what are the in-between numbers like 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3? Those are the floating point numbers. And in most languages, if you wanted X to be a float, you would have to do something like say float X to tell it before you use X that it's going to be a float. But in MicroPython, you don't have to do that. You can just come in and say X is equal to seven. Okay. And then what you can do is you can say print X. And then what you have is the number seven. Now, what I want you to see is I'm going to show you one other thing really quickly here. As I'm doing this, I don't have to type print every time that if I just put the variable name and enter, it will print it out. And that will allow us to go a little bit faster. So if I just say X, it'll print X and that is seven. Now the seven, simple seven by itself, that is an integer 
Why? Because it's not an in-between number and it doesn't have like 7.1, 7.2, 7.3. When you put that decimal point in there, it makes it a floating point number. And very important, even the number 7.0 that is a floating point number. Why? Because you put the point in there. So if I say that x is equal to 7.0, and then I say print x, and it comes out 7.0, at this point, x is no longer an integer. x is a floating point number. But I can come back and I can say x is equal to 7, and then x, and now x is an integer. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Well, let's play around with this. Let's say x is equal to 1, and then let's say y is equal to 2, and let's say z is equal to x plus y, and then let's print z. And what is z? z is 3. And what kind of number, what kind of variable did MicroPython make z? It decided to make it an integer. Why did it do that? Well, it thought, hmm, x is an integer, y is an integer, I'm adding two integers together, I might as well make that an integer. Makes sense, okay? But now watch this, what if I said z is equal to y divided by x? Okay, so now let's look at x is 1, y is 2, and what do you think z is going to be? z is 2.0. Now this is interesting. When you divide, MicroPython always makes the result a floating point number. Even if you take an integer and divide by an integer, it will make the result a floating point number. And also see, not only is y an integer, not only is x an integer, but y divided by x could have been an integer because 2, it could have just made it 2, but it made it 2.0. So what's very important is to see MicroPython, anytime you divide, it creates a variable. It's going to create a result that is a floating point number, even when an integer would have sufficed. I hope that makes sense. Now let's play around a little bit. Let me show you a little bit of a way that you could get in trouble. Okay, let's just say that I made, uh, let's, say, let's say that I made, uh, let's say I'm going to import from machine, I am going to import pin. Okay, so I'm going to work with my GPIO pins. All right, now I'm going to say green LED is equal to, let's make it pin 13. Does that make sense? Okay, now I'm also going to say that y is equal to y is equal to 1 and z is equal to 1 and i'm going to say x is equal to y divided by z now are you keeping track of what x is okay now let's look at green led green led is 13 now i'm going to have red led but I'm going to make red LED the next pin. So red LED is going to be equal to green LED plus the next number, which is just going to be plus X, which was one, right? Okay, so now I've got green LED and I've got red LED. Now I'm going to create an object based on those two pins. So I'm just going to say my red ob my, I'm going to say my green object is going to be green LED, and I'm going to make that a pin out. And if you've taken my earlier lessons, this should make perfect sense. What, what are we doing? We're making green LED, which is pin 13. We are making that an output pin, right? That should make perfect sense. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say green object and I need to be, do this a little bit more carefully, right, is equal to pin a green LED and pin out. And so that is making green object an output pin, and it's going to be 
at green LED, which is pin 13. And boom, that works great. Now let's do the same thing, only here let's do the next one. What was the next one? It was red object. And red object is going to be what? Red LED, because I just added one. I just added one to green LED, so red LED should be what? 14. And then I'm going to make that a pin out. And then, whoa, line one in module value error invalid pin. Did I forget to set red LED? Did I forget to set that? What is red LED? Red LED is 14. So why did the program crash there? Why did it like green LED, but why did it not like red LED? Do you see? Okay, green LED is an integer. And red LED, red LED somehow became a float. Now, I was just sort of doing this by making up code, but this really very easily can happen. What I just did can very easily happen when you're writing code. And let's see what went wrong. We said y is equal to 1, z is equal to 1, and then I said x is equal to y divided by z. And so y divided by z would be 1, right? Wrong. y divided by z would be 1.0. And so you've got to remember now that x is 1.0. Now when I said red LED is green LED plus X, it took the integer 13 and it added the floating point number 1.0 and then it made the result. It said, hmm, I've got an integer and I'm adding a floating point number to it. And even though it's a round floating point number, I better make the result a floating point number. So when we come down and we look at red LED, when we come down and look at red LED, it's 14.0, a floating point number. And this call to the, to the method pin, this call to the method pin, it wants that to be an integer. And there's several ways that we could fix this. We could come in and we could take red LED, which is a floating point number, and we could force it to be an int by putting int open parentheses red LED close parentheses like that. And now if I hit enter, it likes that. Or what I could also do is I could say red LED is equal to int of red LED. And when I do that, now I'm actually making or converting red LED into an int 14. And then I could come up here back to this. And now red LED is an int, so I don't have to force it to be an int in the call. And then if I do that, voila, it works. So we've got to be very careful to keep track of variable types because as our programs get more advanced, many times we call functions and methods, and those functions and methods sometimes specifically want integers. And if we pass them floats, then the program crashes. And sometimes our variables can end up floats even when we don't intend them to, intend them to be. Uh, so we've got to be very deliberate to be keeping track in our mind that we don't inadvertently convert our integers to floats unless we specifically wanted to. We could also go the other way. So I could take, let's look at red LED, and that is 14. I could make red, I could make red LED is equal to a float, float, of red LED like that. And now I could come in and say red LED and it's back to 14.0. So you see I can change something from an int to a float or a float to an int. But if I do that, then I need to be very deliberate about it. There is also another variable type called a string. And a string means a string of characters. And we can think of a string of characters as like a word, something like that. And so I could say my color is equal to red. And what you got to see is to, to define it as a string, 
I have to put the quotes around it. So the single quote, my color is equal to red. And now if I say print my color, what does it print? It prints the string red. What I could also just do is I could just say my color like that and it prints it, uh, it prints it out, but it reminds me with the quotes that it is a string. It reminds me with the quote that it's a string. I could also come up and I could say my color and instead of using the single quote, some people refer to it as an apostrophe, I could use the double ones, okay? And then I could still come in and say my color like that and it's still happy it still says it's red but it knew what i was wanting when i used the double quotes but it seems like it likes the single quote better and so even though i put it in with the double quote it reports it as a single quote because it seems like that's how it keeps track of strings okay what i could also do is i could come in and i could say my num my num uh uh my num one is equal to one like that and then i could say ah let me try that again my my num one is equal to one my num two is equal to five okay and then sum ah better not do that my sum, sum is probably a reserved word, so I didn't want to use that, but my sum is equal to my num1 plus my num2. Okay, now I've got my sum. Somebody tell me what my sum is. If I do this, somebody tell me what my sum is. Okay, my num1 is 1, my num2 is 5, and my sum is my num1 plus my num2. Okay, let's see what happens. And if you said six, you would be wrong. It gives the result of 15 or one five. What happened? I am not sure if you were paying attention, but when I said my num one, I didn't set it to the number one. I set it to what? The string, the character one. And then likewise, my num2 was set to the character 5. And what you have to see is, is that if you are dealing with strings, the addition sign does not sum or doesn't add, it concatenates. Okay, it concatenates, which means it puts one value on the end of the other. So let's come up here, and if I say, uh, where did all that go? Okay, if I say my sum is my num1 plus my num2, and then I print my sum, what do I get? I get 1, 5. Well, what if I did it the other way, and I said my num2 plus my num1, and then my sum, it reverses it, 5, 1. I am concatenating. I am placing 1 string on the other uh, end of the other string and it sort of goes in order. I could come up and I could keep going. I could say uh, my sum 2 plus my sum 1 plus my sum 2. Okay, something did not, something was amiss there. My num2 and then my sum is 515 because I put the 5 I concatenated the one and I concatenated the five. And so just to understand that if you want to push two strings together, you can use the plus sign and it'll concatenate them. Okay. So that's a useful thing, but just don't be surprised. Uh, don't be surprised by it. Okay. Well, let's keep going on. I could also say uh, <clears throat> new num is equal to, how about if we tried to float my sum. Do you think that we could turn that name 515 back into a real number? Let's see. New num. Yep, 515.0. So it took the characters 515, turned them into the floating point number of 515.0. Uh, we could have also, let's see if we can come back up here. Let me create that again. My sum like that. And it's 515. This time what I could do is I could say that 
uh, new num is equal to not float of my sum, but I could make it the int of my sum, and now new num is 515, the number, the integer, and you see it doesn't have the quotes anymore. And then what I could do is like new num is equal to new num plus one, and then new num is 516. Okay, but let's go back and let's create that. Uh, let's create this one again uh, as my sum. Okay, now what if I say uh, <clears throat> my sum is equal to my sum plus one? What do you think is going to happen this time? Think about it. Somebody tell me what's going to happen. We are going to get if you think we are going to get 516, you would be wrong. We are going to get an error, okay? And why are we getting an error? Because 515 is, 515 is a string. One is an integer. It doesn't know what to do with the plus because if I had two strings, it would concatenate them. If I had two integers, it would add them. But if I have an integer and a string concatenation doesn't work, addition doesn't work, and so what do we get? We get an error. So hopefully that makes sense. Now what if I did this? What if I said my sum is equal to my sum plus character one, okay, character one like that, and now said my sum. What's going to happen? It's 515 concatenated with the one, 515 one. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so you've kind of seen that uh, it's really very easy and it's very friendly, but just as you're going through your program, always be mindful of what type of variables you use because it does matter. 15, the the integer 15 is not the same thing as the floating point number 15.0, which is not the same thing as the character string one five okay and you've got to keep track of where you are and you've got to make sure that you don't inadvertently switch from one variable type to another okay so we understand variable types uh, let me do one more okay what if i said that x is equal to true okay now you notice i didn't put the quotes around true i could say x is equal to true, like that, and then I could say what is x? It is the string true, just like any other string. It's just the string true, nothing special about it. But what if I come back and I say x is equal to true? You notice when I typed in true this way, what did it do? It turned a color like it recognized it. And now if I say what is x, it tells me true. But what this is, is this is a logical or a Boolean type variable. Okay, now what if I said, uh, what if I said something like x is equal to x plus one? And then I say, what is x? It says x is two. And so what it did was, it said, this is again showing you the crazy thing with the way it handles variables. At first it said x is true, and then when I say x is equal to x plus 1, it says, well, true, if I made that a number, it would be 1, okay, and then 1 plus 1 is 2, and so now x is no longer a Boolean, it's become an integer. But let's go back and make it Boolean again. So I'm going to say x is equal to false, like that, okay. What is x? x is false. What if I say print x? It prints false. Okay, and so in both cases, we're getting an expected result. And now watch this though. I'm going to say y is equal to not x. Okay, y is equal to not x. x is false. y is not x. Now what does it make x? It makes x true. Now, what if I say z is equal to y plus x like that? What is z? Okay, went back to 1 because it said, well, that uh, x is false, x is 0, 
y is one, and so if you really want to add them, you're going to get up to you're going to get one. But let's go back. Y is true. Z is one and x is false true and false what i could also do is so so let's just let's let's look at this i could say that z is equal to x or y x or y now let's print z now z is true because it's saying uh, the output z is true if x is true or y is true and what did we know? Y was true, and so what did we get? We got true for an output. So let's look again. X is false, Y is true, and then Z is X or Y, and Z turns out to be true. What we could also do is we could say Z is equal to X and Y. And what that's saying is the output is true if the input is true and the other input is true. And in this case, Z is going to be false because while, yes, Y was true, X was false, and they're, both, they're not both true, and therefore the output is false. So we've learned and, we've learned or, and we've learned not in using Boolean, uh, Boolean variables. So we understand floats, we understand integers, we understand strings, and now we played around a little bit with, we played around a little bit with the Boolean variable of true and false. Okay, now, many, many times you need more than a single number. So let's say I have the number grades, and that's equal to 99, and then let's say my new grades is equal to 92. Okay, now what is the problem? The problem is when I put 92 in grades, I lost my first grade. I lost the grade 99. And so sometimes you need to keep a, you need to keep a list of grades. You need to keep all the grades, not just the latest one. Well, how would we do that? We would do that with arrays. And the way you do an array is I can say grades. And this time, instead of saying that it's equal to 92, I'm going to make it a list. And you begin the array with an open bracket, and then you put the grades in. So I'm going to say, well, I had 99, I had 97, I had 86, and I had 95. Okay, now how many grades did I put in there? I put in there four grades. And now if I say what is grades, it gives me the list back, 99, 97, 86, and 95. But you see, a lot of times you don't want just the whole list. You want to do something with the numbers until you want to be able to grab the numbers individually. So what you can do is you can do that by indexing. So I can say I want grades and I want the first the grade is the first grades, grades of one. So if I say print grades of one, what do you think it's going to print? If I say print grades of one, what is it going to print? Grades of index one. If you said 99, you would be wrong <laughs> because remember in the world of computer science most of the time you start counting with zero. So this is the zeroth element this is the one element, this is the two element, and this is the three element. So if I really want the first element, I have to put what? I have to put grades of what? Zero. The zeroth element will be 99. And then if I want the fourth element, because I'm starting to count at zero, I would put grades of three, and that should give me 95. Does that make sense? Now, what if I said grades of four? I am going to get an error. And you need to look at this error because a lot of times when you're coding, you can inadvertently get this error. And if you understand what it is, then it's easy to debug your code. It says line one in module index error, list index out of range. Okay, well, this is the list 
And so grades is the list and four is the index and it's out of range. Why? Because this is zero, one, two, three, and I've asked for the fourth one and the fourth one isn't there. And so I get an error. And so anytime you see list index out of range, it means that you've gone beyond the end of your array. Now, what I want you to see here is let's go back and let's look at X again. Uh, no, not X. What did I call that? Grades. Okay. Let's look at grades again. Okay. There it is. That's my list. And then I could say like gr grades of one. And that is going to be 97 as expected. What I could also say is, let's say I entered the grades wrong. I could say grades of one is equal to 72. Okay, grades of one is equal to 72. Now let's look at grades and boom, look at that. That became, the 97 became a 72 because I can individually manipulate the grades in the array, the numbers in the array, I can individually change. Well, then what if I wanted a new number? Well, now I've got, I've got grades of zero, grades of one, grades of two, grades of three. What if I said now grades of four is equal to 81? So now I could just put that in there. What do you think? Is that going to work? No, because there's no position. I have zero position, one position, two position, three position. I don't have a slot for it. So how would I add, how would I put a new number, make my list longer? The way you would do it is you would say grades dot append. And what do I want to append? Now notice it's an open parenthesis. It's not a bracket. Grades dot append because it's a function call. What am I going to append? I'm going to append 81 to grades. And now if we look at grades, boom, I've got it out there. Now once it's there, now I could say grades of four is equal to 90. 93. Okay. And now look at grades. And so once I got it there, I can change it. But to grow a list, to grow an array, you have to append onto the end of it. You can't do it with the equal sign. You have to append onto the, uh, onto the end of it. Okay. Let's look at another thing with arrays. Let's say that A is equal to 1, 2, 3. Okay. And let's say B is equal to four, five, six. Okay. What if I said C is equal to A plus B? Okay. What do you think C is going to be? What do you think C is going to be? Think about it. All right. Well, you might have thought that it would be five, seven, nine, but you would be wrong. So with arrays, the addition doesn't point by point position by position, add the numbers together. What it does is it concatenates the second list onto the end of the first list, concatenate or append. Now, how would you go in and add the points line by line? Well, we'll look at that a little bit next week when we're learning about for loops and looping. You would have to step through and you would have to manually add them together and we can do that. But what we have to see is we have to see that the simple, uh, the simple concat, the simple plus sign concatenates. It doesn't add. Okay. What I also want you to see is I could also come up and say my colors. I could create an array, and in that array, instead of putting instead of putting numbers in that array, what I could do is I could put strings, and so I could say my colors are red, comma, green comma, blue, like that. And then I can close that. And now what are my colors? My colors are red, green, blue. What is my colors index one? My colors index one is green. Now, just as a reminder, remember that when you index, 
when you're indexing, you use the square brackets. But if you're appending, remember that you have to use the parentheses. And so just keep track of that because it's very easy to uh, do that wrong if you're not careful. Okay, let's go in and let's say my colors two. And what, what's that going to be? That is going to be blue. All right, so now we've done integers, we've done floats, we've done booleans, we've done strings, and we've done arrays, we've done concatenation, we've done a lot of different stuff. But now what I want to also show you is you can have two-dimensional arrays where you have rows and columns. And so let's think of a two-dimensional uh, array where the first row is one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. A 2D array. How would we do that? Well, I'm going to say X is equal to, and then I'm going to open the array. And now what do I need to do? I need to open the first row. And now I need to put the first row elements in. One comma two comma three. Okay. Close the first row. Put a comma. Open the second row. Four comma five comma six. Close the second row, comma, open the third row, and then say seven, comma, eight, comma, nine. And now what I'm going to do, I am going to close the third row and then close the array. All right. And now let's look at X. X is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if I can print X, if it'll do it any differently. Sometimes it'll do it a little different. You know, it does it the same. Okay, now, what if I said X of one? What is that going to be? Well, that is going to be the one row. The first row is zero. The next row is one. And so what it gives me is four, five, six, which is the second row. Does that make sense? Okay, what if I wanted, what if I wanted to get this three out of there? How would I do that? Well, that's X. Stop that. That is X. And what row is it? It's the zeroth row. All right. It's the zeroth row. And then which column is it? It's the zero, one, two column. It's the second column. So what I do is I give it the index of the row, and then I give it the index of the column, and boom, it is three, as we would expect. Now, sometimes in some languages, I don't know if this is going to work. You could say zero, comma, two, like that. But it doesn't. It doesn't like that. It doesn't like that in uh, MicroPython. Sometimes you can kind of put a number, comma, number, and you can you can put the indexes with commas. But MicroPython wants you to do open bracket index, close bracket, open bracket index, close bracket, and then you will get the things that you want. Uh, just like that. Okay, and now what I want to do is I have shown you. Okay, let's go back to my colors. Let's do this. We had this array of my colors. Okay, let's put that back in there. Ah, let's just put it in there like that is equal to what did we have? Red, green, blue like that close it all right whoa what did i i see i didn't open the there like that okay now my colors like that and it is red green blue my colors one is going to be green now what do you think would happen if i said my colors one and then two what do you think would happen if I put another index? Because this is just a 1D array, red, green, and blue. What would it do if I did that? You would get E. Now, how come I got E? Because my color is 1. This is the zeroth element. This is the 1 element. And then I told it to index to 2. Well, this is the 0. This is the 1. And this is the two. So it gave me that E. That's kind of unexpected, but it says, well, he wants to index it again. I 
guess I could just go through the letters if you wanted to. So that's what it does. And it's kind of it's kind of cool to be able to do that. Sometimes that actually comes out uh, that actually comes out to be pretty, uh, pretty uh, helpful. Let me see. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I remember how to do that. Let me just try this real quick. Ah, that doesn't that doesn't like that. I'll have to go back. You, there's actually a command where you can uh, uh, find the length of a micro Python array. I'll have to show you that next week because it's, it's like there's a way that you can actually get the uh, you can actually get the the length of like how many elements there are, and that's uh, that's kind of uh, that's kind of helpful. I'm trying to think. Not exactly sure how to do that, but we'll look at that. We'll look at that next week because getting the length parameter is pretty uh, is uh, is pretty useful. Okay, so we have done. Uh, let's also say I could say I could say uh, my logic, and I could say that is equal to, and then what I could do is I could say true, true, false. Okay. Now notice that I didn't put. I didn't put quotes around true and true and false and it took it. Why? Because now my logic, now my logic is a boolean or a uh, you know a true false type of variable. So my logic, my logic is equal to true true false. And so let's say my answer is equal to my log logic of 0 or my, better get this right, or my logic, I'm having trouble here, my logic of one, or my logic of two. Let's see if I did that without a mistake. And now my answer is, you should be able to see this, it is true because I said, uh, or true or true or false. There's two trues in there. All you needed was one, and so the answer is going to be true. Finally, one more thing. Uh, Python is very, MicroPython is very forgiving and allows you to do some crazy things that you could never do in other programming languages. But you got to be really careful because you can kind of get yourself in trouble if uh, if you're not paying attention. Let me just show you. Let me make x is equal to x is equal to. I'm going to say true. That's a what? That's a boolean. I'm going to say red. That's a what? That's a string. I'm going to say. 1.0, that's what? That's a float. And then I'm going to say 7. And that's what? That is a uh, integer. And then I'm going to say uh, 1, 2, comma 3, like that. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close that. And so let's look at that. It took it. It took it. Can you believe that? Let's come in and let's say x. And it says true, red. Well, how would we index it? x of 1 is red x of 0 is true let's just look at x overall let's say x of 0 1 2 3 x of x of 4 is going to be 1 2 3 and then i could do x of 4 and 1 i could index it like that and then i get as we would expect I get uh, this two here. So, man, this is a mismatched, unbalanced, crazy thing, but Python will allow you to do that. Because you see, even like, uh, <laughs> You know, this is a dimensioned array that is an element in an array that includes ints, floats, strings, and Boolean values. And so if you can type it in, Python will take it.
MicroPython will take it as an array type. But if you do this sort of thing more often than not, you're going to get yourself in, in trouble. And so even though Python allows you to do it, I like to keep well-balanced and well-shaped, well-balanced and well-shaped uh, arrays. And so that is just a little bit of a uh, little bit of how I like to do things. OK, guys, uh, we've learned about variable types, Boolean, strings, integers, and floats. We've learned about arrays. We've learned how to concatenate arrays. We've learned how to index arrays. We've learned one-dimensional arrays, two-dimensional arrays. So we've really learned quite a bit. But I thought that it was worthwhile just stopping and having a lesson on this, stopping and having a lesson on this, rather than just sort of doing it on the fly. I want you to be deliberate about understanding this. OK, guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. and then also leave a comment down below because that will help us with the old YouTube juice. And then as always, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>